Okay, so introduction to the observer. Um, okay, so I'll just do it with the usual way, or maybe I can do it in a different way. So this is, um, yeah, I can do it with a different way. So this is an object. This is my uh, glass case. So it's an experiential exercise. You can, if you want to, you can nod yes or no. But this is an object. It's, it's what I'd call, or what the course might call it, for most people, it's a meaningless object, unless you're a glass case collector, in which case it would be meaningful. Uh, so, now, it's just, and, and these exercises are not intellectual, so it's not to go to your head, but this is an object, and it's really, even though it's very, very simple, I think it gives you an experience of observer and detached observer and a meaningless object, and is an object what you are, yeah? So if I hold this object, uh, either there is detached, for most people there will be detached observation of the object. And uh, if I was to ask someone, are you this glass case, I think most people would say no. You know, there is, and what is it, when you have detached observation, what are the qualities of detached observation? There's absolute spiritual clarity, not mental clarity, spiritual clarity that, and space that the object is not the observer. Uh, so that's not a mental thing. I'm not trying to explain a mental concept to anyone. We'll come to thoughts in a moment. But when there's an object, like no one's, hopefully no one's confused that the glass case is what they are, or they're going to have an argument with me that I am the glass. I mean, you can have an argument. I'm not going for experience, not, not mental arguments, but for experience. Like, no, the, the essence of who I am is observing. And, there, there is spa and there's also space. There's clear space between the object. OK, one of the, one of the you know, the uh, Course in Miracles uh, says that all my thoughts are meaningless. That's a really interesting Course in Miracles lesson. You know, and what does meaningless mean? And what, would a me what are meaningful thoughts? That's an interesting one to contemplate. Meaningful thoughts and meaningless thoughts. Now again, you know, the glass case is meaningless. And there's clear detachment. And there's no confusion. No one's, most people, it would be very rare for me to have an argument and somebody to say, I am the glass case in my experience. Mm -hmm. Now, we come to thoughts. OK, this is a big one because the course course says all my thoughts are meaningless. Uh, so, so thoughts are passing by in consciousness. One of the lessons in A Course in Miracles is, I think it's a bit like they're going by like a conveyor belt. You know, the thoughts are passing by and now, but what's observing the passing thoughts? Another thing with thoughts is they are discrete and limited and have form. The course talks about things being off form and it sometimes talks about formlessness, which is, which is a different essence to that of form. So like a, a, a glass case has form. You know, one of the things I like to say about form is the observer can notice how tall the case is and how wide the case is. And if I move it, the observer is aware of the movement of the form. You know, so like a thought has to be a, like, like clouds that pass by in the sky. You know, like one cloud is very fluffy and the next cloud is slightly grey and the next one slightly white. But those are different grades of form, aren't they? Mm -hmm. You know, like there's, a, there's a, a thought passes by in consciousness, the sky is blue, another thought passes by in consciousness, the grass is green. But that, that, those are discrete forms which are passing by in consciousness. So what is the register? What is that which is conscious of form passing by? So thoughts are passing by, but what's observing thoughts pass by? Again, it's not, not a mental question. Do not go to your head to answer this. What witnesses all thoughts that come and go? Yeah, is there, and this is the, the question, is, is there an experience of a witnesser of thoughts, which is not thoughts? Is there, is there an experience? So if it, now, okay. If there are thoughts passing by and there's hooking in or identification with thoughts, let's say a thought passes by, <clears throat> the, only, the only thoughts that which tend to get registered are special thoughts or meaningful thoughts. You know, like a, a thought that the cloud is grey tends to not really be registered or hooked. And there's, there's clear detachment. 
<clears throat> or something like that. But if their thought comes in like, I don't understand this, or it, those tend to be more personal thoughts, or, or, or I thoughts tend to be very personal. But, uh, <clears throat> but okay, so if, if it, there's confusion, if there's enmeshment with the thoughts, there's not detached observing the thoughts, there's not a space that opens up with clear, uh, clear experience that, oh yeah, there's always a witnessing here of thoughts, which is not nothing to do with thoughts. Clear, detached space. If not, then, the, then what's happening is that either one is very enmeshed in thoughts or identified with thoughts, or the observer is very weak. And so you might be going in and out. There's awareness that something is here which is not my thoughts, which is witnessing the thoughts, but then you lose it as you identify with the next thought. If that's the case, if there is a weak observer, go to the detached, the observer of the identified observer. So there's an observer that seems, there's something that wants to hook into the next thought. But then is there something that's observing that observer which it doesn't want to hook into the next thought? So is there an, you know, a, a witnessing field of consciousness which is not hooking into the next thought? So see if a space opens up. So the next thing is, I'm going <clears> to <throat> carry on, and maybe later on we'll have some one-to-ones as well, but not at this stage. So is the body. So now the Course of America, so friend from Cosmos, the Course says that I'm not a body, I'm free, for I'm as God created me. Yeah, I'm not a body, I'm free, for I'm as God created me. So, and I think the body's a great one, because uh, thinking this is one of the biggest addictions, you know, making thoughts special and then getting lost in them is a huge ego addiction. The other one is extreme identification with the body and what goes on. You know, it's, these are like very hardcore addictions, hardcore identification with separation and the limited self or the ego self or sometimes called the body mind. <clears throat> so. Now, but, you know, if you're experiencing yourself as body, or if there's any tightness in the stomach, or in the heart, or, or tension in the head, these are all objects. And when I say they're objects, like if there's a tension in the head, that's like a, that is an object. You know, if you, if you experience it, like the head is a, is a location, and it will be like a balloon in, in the head. Or if you're aware of the body, if there's awareness of body, the body is like a canister, isn't it, really? It's like a big tube. There's awareness of the height and, and the width. There may be some density to the canister. But all of that is an object. But what observes the object of the body? What knows it's so tall? What's witnessing that? What's observing that? So the observer of an object yeah, and if, and, it, and if you're aware of the observer of the body, either that's detached observing, or if that observer is weak, go to the observer of that observer and see if, that, if the observing of the body has got any connection to the body. Now, as soon as you go, one of the, if you're new, if you're new to this, if you, go to your, if you go to a thought, drop it. Just at the instant you go to a thought to try and understand something, just drop it. Because as soon as you go to a thought, you start being in the field of thinkingness. But that's not the field of observing thinkingness. Thinkingness and the observer of thinkingness are two different fields of consciousness. Okay, so the next one is, is there any sense of time? You know, people are often tracking time, you know, uh, like ten, this, this, has got, this has taken 10 seconds or 3 minutes. Is there any sense of what I call time tracking? Yeah, something in consciousness is trying to register time. And if there is any sense of time, this is very subtle, I understand that, but what observes a sense of time? Is there a, de a detached witnessing of time? And in that which witnesses the sense of time, does time exist? You see, in that which witnesses thought, do, do thoughts exist? Uh, in that which witnesses the body, does the body exist in the observer of that which witnesses the body? Is there any body witnessing the body? Is there any thought that witnesses thoughts? Is there, is there a clock behind that which witnesses time? The next one is location. Yeah. 
So some people will have a sense of being located somewhere. Like, oh, I'm located in this corner of the room. But a sense of location is a limitation. Yeah. So it, it's a locality, it's a data. But what observes t location? So if there's a sense of location, what's witnessing location? And is the witnesser of look does that in that space which is witnessing location, is there does location exist in the witnessing of location? So these are experiential explorations, shall we say. <clears throat> now the next thing is, you know, the process of self-inquiry is the experiencing of, I call it, you know, do I experience myself as being an object right now or being in limitation right now? And if I am, if I experience myself as being a body of thoughts or time-bound time or location-bound, that's great because that's used for the process. Because if I'm a thought or a body, but what's observing that? So as you, and as you peel back the layers of observation of objects, the sense of self becomes more and more limitless. Because each time you go to that which is observing thoughts, the observer becomes more expansive. And as you go to the observer of body, the witnesser becomes even more limitless. And as you go to the witnesser of time, the experience of self starts to seemingly expand. The boundaries of self, the limitations of self, start disappearing. But then you get to a more limitless self, and then you see, is there a witnesser of that more limited, limitless self? Ultimately, if the self is in any way constricted or limited or discreet, what's witnessing that? Also, if there's any sense of fluctuating states, you know, like going in and out of something, like one can be experienced being in thought and out of thought, or in body or out of body, or in location or out of location, or in time or out of time. So those are what I call fluctuating, going in and out. But is there an observer here that observes the fluctuation which does not go in and out? So is there a witnesser, a, a greater witnesser, which doesn't experience going in and out and fluctu fluctuating in and out of separation? <clears throat> is there a witnesser here that all things that can come and go pass before it, but there is nothing in it that it cannot observe pass by? So it's unpassable. It's unchangeable. It's not touched by time, by body, by thoughts, or by anything that can arise and pass in consciousness. And this, uh, this witnessing, this field of consciousness, you know, be, if you experience that, just rest in that. So we're going to have like <clears throat> three or four minutes of silence now, just to think and, and explore oneself. What is the nature of self?